the book I critically reviewed is Our Own Devices by Edward Tenner. And um, the cover kind of gives you an overview just with all those pictures. And I didn't think they had anything at all to do with each other, but he wraps his transitions wrap each, up, each chapter up. And um, hopefully I'll explain that for you. So first, there's a couple reviews. Um, there were tons and tons and tons of reviews out on this book. It's a few years old, I think 2003. Um, most of them, probably 90% of them, were positive, and only a few of them were negative. Um, I did find two pretty basic ones. Um, one of them is actually off of the book itself, and the other one is just from Amazon.com. But they pretty much sum up both sides of the argument. So um, It had ten chapters, and they each had just one object for each chapter. It was very focused on that. Um, they all go into the history, and, and it kind of mentions creative destruction in each how the history has changed and how it's going to happen in the future as well. And I'll be covering each of those chapters. I'll just summarize it for you a little bit. So the first chapter wasn't about any particular object. It was more of a definition chapter of technique and technology and how they're interrelated and you can't, can't have one without the other. Um, he actually says that technology is the result of a technique instead of a source and that's something I had never really thought about before. Um, the way that techniques can be become relocated, he used an example of cars and how they used to be all manual, and now they're all automatic. Um, just little things like that, and it completely made sense once we read the chapter two. So our first um, technology that we go into is the bottle, and um, Tenor seems to be in favor of breastfeeding compared to the bottle just because of all how the technique alters, your, the biggest mouth that alters their immune system, it, it alters long-term effects. It alters stuff on the mother as well. Um, original, instead of when, before the bottle came out, there were wet nurses, there were midwives, there were glass objects, there were plastic things, things that were really hard to keep clean, and so babies, they got really sick. Um, some research that has been done is you get your baby's mouths and tongues have different roles from the bottle to the breast, so that means their teeth form differently, they have more orthodontic issues, um, they don't get the natural vitamins from their mother's milk. He actually pointed towards the future how cows have an engineer to produce human's milk. Um, I'm not sure if it's fully developed yet, but it seemed a little odd. And his question was, if that's true and it's successful with no long-term effects, then what will that do to breastfeeding altogether? Um, chapter 3 was about the Zord, which we know as the thong or the sandal. We all wear them. Well, they've been around since way back when. Um, they've been around for so long that this chapter has a whole page just on, well, this country calls it this. This country calls it this. It's really quite amazing how many types there are out there. Um, he says that the way we move is based on what we wear, and what we wear affects how we walk. For instance, bare feet are the best way. That's how we're supposed to walk. Um, you don't have sensitivity until you get used to wearing shoes because then the natural callus on your feet goes away. And if you step on a rock the wrong way, well, obviously you get hurt. But we learn to walk differently because of we have shoes on now. Um, with the Zori and sandals nowadays, people who use them habitually, their bone structure tends to change. Um, with the middle, with the, <laughs> with the in between the middle and the big toe, we preserve gripping our nat in our natural state, but we also increase the spacing between our toes, which is the creative destruction aspect of the Zori. Um, with the Zori, it happened for quite a long time ago, but it was very popular right away. However, with athletic shoes, it took a long, long time for those to become nearly as popular as sandals would be today. Um, the purpose of the shoes didn't really catch on, but the recreational aspect definitely caught on with the younger, the elderly people, and um, the athletes as well. Uh, to get people, they used to run barefoot, and to get them to run with shoes, they thought it would slow them down or, or damage their toes, and they were painful at first, so nobody really wanted to wear them anyway. The purpose of the elevated heels with our shoes was to prevent injuries and um, to assist the natural cushion that our hips and knees do. He then goes on to talk about chairs and posture, and how before we had any chairs, humans had the perfect posture. Um, females had corsets, so they had to stuff straight anyway, and men, well, they've always just kicked back and relaxed. It's kind of been the authority way of doing it. Um, these chairs are supposed to be helping increase productivity, 
but all it did was lead to the recliner and sleeping and laziness mm -hmm. and eventually he tenor compares it to obesity as well. Um, the story that I think of when I think of recliners is men in their older age and recliners, how they say, I'll never have one because my dad does and they bought an old guy chair and then they get one and they're like, oh, I wish I had a bathroom and a fridge too. <laughs> Um, he then talks about the keyboards, musical and um, computer keyboards, and it's been pretty stable. There hasn't been many changes over time. Um, it's been most influenced by the electric music, um, new instruments, new sounds. It hasn't gone out of style. It's been used in very, very different ways over time. And um, when the keyboard, the musical keyboard, first came out, it was something that was only female-focused. It was their discipline. It was their skill, something you know, that they could show off. But the technolo technological keyboard um, took quite a while. Five centuries after the musical keyboard came out, um, it, the original keyboard was the QWERTY, QWERTY keyboard. And as you can see, over time, it hasn't really changed, even though other ones have been better proficiency and efficiency. Um, it took all handwriting use and threw it out the window. So, I mean, all the cursive we learned and penmanship, well, we don't really need any of that. But he goes on to talk in the future how it's all going to be voice activated anyway. Um, chapter 9 was about eyeglasses and how all of our typing and typewriters led to more increased eye problems, especially nearsightedness. Um, they were associated for fashion purposes, for education, um, more like an accessory instead of a necessity. And you could do them to express yourself or like nowadays they're pretty much invisible frames on your faces, um, especially with contact and laser eye surgery as well. And his last chapter talks about helmets, and when he says helmets, he means the original helmet back in war, the metal ones. They were really hard and heavy, you couldn't really see out of them, and eventually they became for the police for protect, protective gear in sports, and eventually for babies. Um, the baby aspect came about when parents were told, don't let your babies sleep on their back or sleep on their tummy because of sudden death syndrome. And so the result was everyone, they were on their backs so much that their heads became flat. Well, sometimes you can correct it naturally, other times you need an orthopedic helmet to do so. Um, all these chapters clearly relate to creative destruction. And some of the future parts um, of the, like the sneaker, well now they have ones that relate to your iPod and to your computer about statistics that you have, how fast you're running. Um, the piano, how it led to recording music, but it didn't put out of business, and how the keyboards and literacy levels um, affected our eyesight. Okay, well that's not the most recent. So his style was academic. Um, it was also, had many dates, many facts, um, many names. It went through the history of every single object. Um, it was geared towards more technological educators, I felt, um, just because of the history was based on all the techno technological aspects. But anybody over the grade, grade of grade 10 could probably get a good feel just for some of the vocabulary he used was a little over their heads. Um, but any background should be able to get some interest out of this. Some chapters were more interesting to me and some chapters weren't, obviously because the topics varied. But he didn't have very many pictures, but when they were needed, they were in there, which was a good choice on his part. And... Um, this is Edward Tenner, the author, and he's just an independent professor at, um, in New Jersey. Any questions?